So here we have z equal to zero, which is nothing but your x y plane. X y plane, okay. And z is equal to y. As you can see, here you have this plane z equals to y that cuts through the cylinder z equals to y. And this is your cylinder here. What are we interested in? We're interested in the portion of the intersection between these planes and the cylinder. So what is that portion? And how do we identify the projection in x, y plane and actually find the boundaries? That is our goal. Let's take a look at a better visualization. Here we go. So here you have your cylinder and you have your plane z equals to y. As you can see, that cuts through the cylinder. And of course you have z equal to zero, which is just exactly down here. That's where it starts to. So we're interested in this portion. The projection of this portion, look at this, the projection of this portion in XY plane is this, this nice region down here. What is this? And how do we find and identify the boundaries. This is our goal. It's obvious Z is bounded between zero and Y. We don't have any problem with Z. We want to know how to identify this region and find the boundaries. A little bit so it stays off. So Z is bounded between zero and one. I'm good with this portion. I have x squared plus y squared, so I want to use symmetrical coordinates. Symmetrical coordinates. So when z is bounded between 0 and y, I have to make some changes here, you see. And for this portion down here, so what is this portion? What is this region here? I have my x. I have my y, and this guy is just behaving like this. There we go. So take a look at this. Your y is positive. You can see it from here. From this inequality, y is non-negative. Okay. So I can just automatically ignore this part. I want to know what are the boundaries for this little region here. So let me just flip this so we have a better visualization. I have my x, I have my y, and y is not negative. This is my little portion. And so that's some of this. It's not very hard to see theta ranges between zero to pi. This is for your theta. It just travels starting from zero and it stops at pi. 
So here's a point for you. Zero, two, one. I'm trying to use polar coordinates and real ideas. How about your R? You know that x squared plus y squared is less than equals to four. So your radius is actually changing between zero to two. This is your radius. Zero. Well, I'm converting everything into R and theta except for my Z. I know that X is R cosine theta. Y is R sine theta. Y is R sine theta. So I have to substitute that here. So my Z is bounded below by zero and on top it's bounded by R sine theta. So now we are ready to set up our triple integrals and solve. The triple integral of the function z dz r dr d. I know my theta. Is bounded between zero to five. I have it here. I have my r in between zero to two. There you go. No problem here. And my z is bounded between zero and r sine theta. Perfect. So let us calculate the middle integral. Here you have equal to zero to five, zero to two. I have a half z squared, z ranges between zero to r sine theta. Note that I have r, don't forget about this r, dr, d theta. So let us substitute our sine theta. I'm not worried about zero because the outcome is equal to zero. And I'm going to take this uh, a half scalar and write it in front of my integrals. Zero to five, zero to two, and z squared gives you r squared sine theta. I'm going to copy down my r dr d theta. Isn't it sine squared? Oh, yes, I forgot about x. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> there we go. R times R squared gives me R cubed. Perfect. Again, you can say that, hey, I have fixed boundaries. I have R cubed and it's multiplied by sine squared, so I can separate these. Integrals. I have a half integral zero to pi sine squared theta d theta multiplied by integral zero to two r cube d r for sine squared we have to use half an angle formula. This is equal to a half integral zero to pi one minus cosine two theta divided by two d theta. And here I have it's not very hard to calculate to get a four. Mark the four, r starts from zero and starts at two. Zero. So I have a half this integral. Here we can see the book, yes. Zero to pi, a half minus two cosine two theta divided by two times two d theta. I'm using 
You can see that we're using USOP. And here I have 16 divided by. There we go. So here we get an erasis form. You have a half. And here you have, let's multiply by four, four divided by two, which is two. So here you get theta divided by two minus a four sine two theta, starting from zero and stopping at. There you go. If I plug in pi here, if I plug in zero here, this sign is going to be zero. So I'm not worried about that. I have two times pi over two, which gives me Let us take a look at our website. 